Hi, I'm Patrick Jaguer with Cosmic Alchemist Astrology. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who watches these videos, who likes, subscribes, shares the videos, and comments. It's very encouraging. It helps the channel, and I appreciate you. If you're not yet a subscriber, I ask you to consider doing so. So let's get into this topic here. So this is kind of a follow-up. So a couple days ago, it was the day, it was Wednesday, it was the day after the um, solar eclipse in Libra Scorpio. So solar eclipse took place Tuesday, 25th of October, 2022. The next day I made a video. And I just sort of had this feeling like, you know, I got to talk about President Joe Biden and how this solar eclipse affects him because it's actually a pretty prominent place in his chart. So I made this video and I, in that video, I basically said, you know, I think he doesn't have much longer to serve as president, whether he's incapacitated by serious illness and he has to resign or whether he passes away. And I certainly don't wish that upon him. Um, He's as human as the rest of us. He's not a shape-shifting reptilian. He's not a clone. He's a human. And, you know, he he's a traumatized person. Um, he's done some evil shit through the course of his life, for sure. But, you know, it's like, he loves his family in his own way. Um, you know, and I do wonder why his son is a crackhead. Um, you know, he may have, like, molested him or something like that. Um, it's often how that stuff happens. So, he's done He's done some, some what you could call evil shit in his life, but he's as human as the rest of us. So, I don't, ish, I don't wish illness or death upon him. But, um, you know, he's got some karma coming back to him, I think. And he's, he's old, he's frail, and... Um, more to the point about my video on the 26th of October, he had a solar eclipse take place in his 12th house of hospitalization, isolation, and moksha. So moksha is liberation. So moksha is liberation from this 3D world. It's physical death. So basically, your body dies and your soul passes in back to the next world. So... That's why the 12th house is liberation, and liberation and death can be synonymous. So again, hospitalization, isolation, and death, because a hospital is an isolated place, and you're convalescing. You're not doing business. You're not surrounded by a bunch of people. You are isolated. So what I said was, in light of where this solar eclipse took place in his chart, his 12th house, I said that he had maybe two weeks, um, you know, maybe a month more as president. Because in 2021, let me see, his birthday is the, what is it? The 20th of November. On November 19th, 2021, there was a lunar eclipse. So when you have eclipses, whether solar or lunar, on or within a few days of your birthdays, you lose a parent. If it's a solar, you're probably gonna lose your dad. If it's a lunar, you'll probably lose your mother. If you're, you're older, your parents are gone and then your health is getting frail, you could be taken out of this world or at least you could go to the hospital with something very serious. So in light of his health, he's had brain aneurysms since the 1980s, you know, when the cocaine was flying around. Um, and he's been on medication to keep him from having aneurysms ever since the 1980s, and which affects your brain. Um, he also has decline of cognitive function. If Donald Trump had this kind of cognitive decline, the media would just would be all over him, and there'd be, you know, there would be congressional hearings trying to force him to resign, trying to impeach him over his health. So, this is a total double standard of Joe Biden here. You know, saying he's fit as a fiddle. So, in light of all that that I said, I think on that very, it was that very day, I also drew some runes. And I'll get into those later, but the runes didn't look good for him at all. And I said, furthermore, November 8th, when the lunar eclipse comes, he is, um, 
Like that could do even more to do him in. So the lunar eclipse, since eclipses are always in opposite signs and houses, a lunar eclipse, Aries, opposite from Libra where the solar was, the lunar, Aries, it's in his sixth house of illness, disease, um, sickness, you know, poisons, medicines, all that stuff. So he's going to the hospital at the very least. Um, the one interesting thing is that with that solar eclipse in Libra on the 25th of October, K2, the dragon's tail, the south node of the moon, was actually conjunct his natal Mars. So K2 and Mars together, what that is, is that can speak to an assurance of victory. So this could mean, well, he could be really sick, but he's going to make it. You know, it's like, you got this, Joe. Or it can mean like his soul is like going on to glory. It's going on to the next world. Um, because before the Christian era, before the Islamo-Christian era, death was celebrated in those pre-Christian, pre-Islamic societies. It was only when Christianity and Islam took over that death was a thing to be feared and dreaded. And people started saying shit like, oh, he or she went behind the veil of tears, you know, when somebody dies. It went from being a celebration to going behind the veil of tears. Well, this is because the churchmen who run Christianity and Islam, they thrive when people are afraid of death. And here in a Christian world, you know, we have this expression about old people. It's like so-and-so found religion. And it's like, well, they didn't care for religion. Because, you know, they could see, like, the hypocrisy behind it. They could see it's hokey. But then when they got old and they started feeling their mortality and feeling it, they decided to, like, become these committed churchgoers. So, yeah, death is like a churchman's, a clergyman's, like, best friend. Not all of them. A lot of great clergymen, a lot of great ministers, priests, rabbis, you know, whatever. But, um... They work for a corporation. They all work for a corporation. They work for a brand. And you have to do what you have to do to market your brand and get people to subscribe. So the fear of death is a very powerful thing for people running religions. So, so yeah, it's like that K2 Mars, like, you know, it could mean... Well, K2, this like shadow is basically stealing his energy and vitality, which is Mars. Or it could mean that he's going to make it. Um, you know, who knows? Um, I don't think he's, I don't think he has long. And like I said, I don't wish death or illness upon the man. Um, but, you know, like I said, he's not some eight foot reptile shapeshifter. He's human. Just like any other, you know, I'm just like the the truthers and the flat earthers, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, he's not a clone. Um, he's an old man who has dementia. He's undergoing elder abuse and he's on a lot of designer drugs. So now another thing on that day, you know, I pulled those runes, didn't look good for him. Now the point of me making this video so I said to myself, um, well, you know, maybe I'm misinterpreting, you know, I'm just speculating here. I'm pulling this out of my ass. Well, then what was it? I think yesterday he does an interview with MSNBC in this, I can't remember the interviewer's name, but the interviewer asks him, so what would you tell people who are wondering if you're healthy enough to get reelected in 2024 and make it through your time. I, I think it's a legitimate thing to be concerned about anyone's age, including mine. I think that's totally legitimate. But I think the best way to make the judgment is to, uh, to you know, watch me. You know, am I slowing up? Am I don't have the same pace as her? You know, uh, and that old joke, you know, uh, um, everybody talks about the, you know, the new 70s, 50s, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, it could be, I, I'm a great respecter of fate. I could 
get a disease tomorrow. I could, you know, drop dead tomorrow. But I, you know, in terms of my energy level, in terms of how much I'm able to do, I think people should look and say, is it, does he still have the same? I can't even say the age I'm going to be. I can't even <laughs> get it out of my mind. And Biden said, I quote, I could drop dead tomorrow, end quote. And then he went on and on to say, well, you know, somebody my age, you just never know what's going to happen with your health. Now he's absolutely right. You know, anybody, you know, the next moment is not guaranteed for anybody, no matter how young, fit, and strong you are. That's absolutely true. And especially when you're 80 years old, the next minute is guaranteed even less. So he's right. He's absolutely right. But. The timing was just odd because he got his, he acquired his fourth rooster on the morning, just a few hours after the solar eclipse in Libra on the 25th of October, 2022. So the maximum for that solar eclipse in Libra was what? I think 6.30 a.m., something around that time, early morning, you know, sunrise, by what? Nine ten o'clock, he's on TV, and he's acquiring his fourth rooster, his fifth needle craft and all. So, to have that astrology, to have that solar eclipse in your 12th house, followed by an upcoming lunar in your 6th, so 12th house, death, hospitalization, isolation, 6th house, disease, illness, medicines, poisons, to be getting, to be acquiring that rooster, that fifth needle craft, just a few hours, a couple hours after that solar eclipse, during the eclipse season, so an eclipse season is at two weeks in between a lunar and a solar eclipse or vice versa, and they always follow each other. So you've Two eclipse seasons in a year. There's always a lunar and a solar, or a solar and a lunar. And in between there, that two-week eclipse season between lunar and solar eclipses is a very volatile time. So he not only gets, he not only acquires that fourth rooster, that fifth needle craft, within that eclipse season, but it's on the morning of the solar eclipse in his twelfth house. And then a day later, when asked about, well, what would you say to people who? are wondering if you're healthy enough to, to run for another term. He says, quote, I could drop dead tomorrow, end quote. So anybody could drop dead tomorrow, but the timing is extremely odd here. And then, so MSNBC did that interview. Well, they ran an article, and then news outlets all over the world, the English-speaking world and the foreign news, they just started parroting that article. So they're all so the whole world, the news media is parroting that. Now the interesting thing, you know, of course, like the uh, the QAnon types and the Alex Joneses and you know the Mike Adams people, you know, the people, you know, and other people who they use hysteria and fear the same way that mainstream media does in order to get subscribers, purchasers, likes, views. And, it, you know, of course, they're, go they're going to make a big deal about it. And it is a big deal. So they're, they're making a big emotional deal. But then the mainstream outlets, like the ones that are, that are left biased, they're just running it. And they're not, they're not putting the information out there with, a suggested emotional reaction. And that's the thing media does. Every time, pretty much every time they put information out about a world leader or about some event, they cue you, the viewer, and they tell you how to react to it emotionally. So, you know, people, the majority of the population at this point is a bunch of ready-mades. So, it's not like the old days where the news just gives you information. It's a reality TV show and it's hysterical and it's juvenile and it's highly emotional. They tell you what emotional reaction to have. Now, with this story, 
they just very nonchalantly in a very laid back, relaxed way, they kind of float it out there. So it's in your face. Like it's it's in the print media, it's in the online articles, it's probably in a you know in the newspaper at this point, like the the toilet paper record, the New York Times. They may have printed it, um, but um, you know the talking head news anchors aren't talking about it and telling you what emotional reaction to have. So this, in my opinion, is certainly predictive programming. You know, because like I said, I read the astrology. I read the runes and I was like, I could be pulling this out of my ass. I could be seeing what I want to see. Even though when I, when I use divination, when I use I Ching, runes, astrology, I always ask for guidance and I say, help me to clear my emotional assumptions, my emotional biases and, you know, my ego's assumptions so I can get a clean reading. Um, but, you know, I'm human, right? And I have to interpret this stuff. It has to go through the filter of my mind. So, you know, I said, well, this could be possible. So I could be wrong. But then the next day to have him come out and, you know, and, and say, quote, I could drop dead tomorrow, end quote, when asked about his health. So let me see. That was two days after acquiring his fourth rooster and his fifth overall needle craft. He came out and said that. I think this is a predictive programming. Um, possible, well, you know, I can't say that for sure, obviously, because I'm not one of his handlers. I'm not one of his, his masters, his corporate sponsors. This could be completely unconscious because, you know, I've, I'm from a big family. I've been in the military. It's like people know when they're going to pass. They just have a feeling. It's like, I guess I could be dating myself, but like a really famous one was Ronnie Van Zant. He was the um, lead singer for Leonard Skinner back in the 70s. He died at 29 in a plane crash in Mississippi because their, their pilots were like stoners and alcoholics and they were picking them up in I think like Baton Rouge, Louisiana. They were gonna fly him back to Jacksonville, Florida. And at the airport, they forgot to gas the plane up because they were fucking, drunk and stoned so not long into the flight they announced hey we're out of gas uh, we're gonna land in the woods and uh, Ronnie Van Zant who was exhausted from you know partying and playing a show was sleeping on the floor of the plane he got thrown and you know I think he like cracked his head open point is with Ronnie Van Zant so he died at 29 in that plane crash in Mississippi it's like a year or two ahead of that, he kept telling the people in his life, like his parents, his family, his friends, he kept telling them that he wasn't going to live to see 30 years old. And then he started telling people to call him the Mississippi Kid. So it was like it was, he knew it was coming. Um, and there's, self, there's some self-fulfilling prophecy to that because, you know, we, we write our own script in this life. And that's the value of getting in touch with your unconscious mind and basically developing a relationship with it so that it knows that you are in charge and that you're leading it. That's the value of all meditative practices, yoga, qigong, all that stuff. It gives the unconscious mind ritual and structure. It puts it at ease. And then the unconscious mind is your built-in manifestor. So you can tell it, to manifest any genuine soul desire you have. So that's the thing I get into in readings with people because there's a planet that actually rules your own conscious mind, which is your built-in manifesto. So, oh, and she knows again. Ah, I don't do blow. So um, that's, that's the thing I go into in astrology readings with people. If you're curious about that, you know how to find me. Um, so yeah, but this Ronnie Van Zant, he knew it was coming. Everybody has a story. Everybody knows a story of somebody famous or in their own lives who knew their death was coming. And it's like, it's all unconscious. People don't know why they're saying it. They're, they're like, they'll just tell you, I have a feeling. Um, and sometimes you can tell when somebody's not long for this earth. So 
he may have been doing that totally unconsciously. Now, the other possibility, he, he's on a lot of drugs. You know, he, he's, he's undergoing elder abuse. It's really criminal what's being done to him. So he's on a lot of drugs. Um, and with that comes mind control. Now, a lot of people think mind control is like a bunch of silly, you know, conspiracy theory nonsense. It's very real. CIA admitted to doing it in the 1970s in Senate hearings. But they swore, they stopped. Boy Scouts honor, well, we quit. <laughs> so, you know, Treadstone just became Blackbriar, became Larks. Um, they just changed the name of the program. This is all mind science that was taken from Nazi scientists who were given war crimes immunity and given new lives here in America. They also built our psychiatric system. Um, so this mind control, it is real. I have, I have experience with it. I don't talk about it much, but um, it's basically deep hypnosis where the suggestions are reinforced by drugs and by pain, basically by torture. So, you know, you talk to a stage hypnotist, you know, who hypnotizes people on stage and makes them do goofy shit and act like chickens. Uh, you talk to a hypnotherapist who does, you know, kind of regular mainstream hypnotherapy out of an office. And they're like, oh, you can't be made to do anything that harms another person or yourself under hypnosis. And it's like, well, I fucking beg to differ. Um, it's like, well, you don't know about mind control. You don't know about the drugs and the torture that gets used. So point is, Biden's definitely under some form of mind control, like many world leaders and, um, like many people in the military, the intelligence services, Hollywood, corporate world. So it could be easily suggested. He could easily have some sort of strong hypnotic suggestion to say that, to say, quote, I could drop dead tomorrow, end quote. Um, that wouldn't be a hard one. And it's a total no-brainer that that question's coming because, you know, we're days away from the midterm elections and, and those, the, the presidential clown show election cycle is getting ready to start up because it's like they do it earlier and earlier every year so they're getting ready for that clown show very predictable question plus when a politician is a darling of the media because the media is overwhelmingly left biased i refuse to believe that they don't feed his staff the president's staff or whoever's staff the questions ahead of time. So they knew that question was coming. Pretty easy to make the hypnotic suggestion. So I'm convinced that's the case. So either he's under some form of hypnotic suggestion, mind control, he's speaking out of his unconscious, and then a variation of speaking on your unconscious is joking. Because everybody jokes about things that they're serious about. And, you know, joking, telling a joke well, it actually comes out of your own conscious. Like, when somebody's timing is really good, when somebody's really witty and skillful with words, they don't have to think about it. It's like, it's like when, you, when you pun or you have double entendres. It's almost out of your mouth by the time you even realize what you're saying. So, yeah, he's either speaking from his own conscious seriously or jokingly or you know he's had a hypnotic suggestion to say that very thing so yeah you know another thing that that sixth house lunar eclipse for him on the um november the 8th sixth house also deals with enemies so that's an interesting thing um another interesting thing is Mars because Mars when you're looking at sidereal which I go with primarily you're looking at sidereal astrology Mars on October 30th will retrograde one degree of Gemini that's his eighth house so eighth house of sudden illness sudden death sudden ups and downs sudden upsets um, scandals crimes conspiracies 
it, you know, all the hidden truths in life. That's Gemini for him. So it retrogrades one degree of Gemini, goes back in the Taurus. It's going to go all the way back to 14 degrees Taurus to Aldebaran. And that's in his seventh house. So the seventh house, it's your spouse, it's your relationships, business partnerships, it's politics. It's uh, even exchange of goods and energy. But then it's also your enemies because your enemies are people you have a social relationship with. So Mars going back there, Mars, it's warrior energy. So it's like a dart, a blade, a needle, going back to his seventh house of enemies. There's a lot of different reference points here in his astrology for what I think is going to happen to him. <clears throat> so, so yeah, I think by yeah November the 20th, He's incapacitated, definitely, or he's passed. Um, you know, I think I think the whole thing is done by about then, because by about his birthday. Because again, last year he had a lunar eclipse almost on his birthday. So by his birthday this year on November twentieth, he's done. He's out in some way, shape, or form. Uh, before I signed off, you know, let's look at these runes. So I did a nine world rune spread. This is actually the rune spread that I do. So um, in readings, it's not like your typical runes where I do like three or four of them in like the past, present, future. I actually do the nine worlds um, and it shows all of the nine worlds, you know, in this reality, all the nine dimensions. So... It's a really interesting, really rare type of a rune reading. Not many people do it. Um, I was fortunate enough to have someone teach me such a rare and unusual um, way to do it. So, anyway, this is Nine World Rune Spread. So, basically, this looks like a compass. It's got eight directions and one in the middle. So, I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. So... What I asked was, I said, tell me the outcome in the energy of Mr. Joseph Biden acquiring his fourth rooster, his fifth overall needle craft on eclipse morning, 25th of October, 2022. So here's what I got to begin the reading in the dead center in uh, Midgard, Midgard, Middle Earth, the visible light world we live in. 3D. I got the the elk rune, the Elhaj, otherwise known as Alhiz. I got that inverted. So this rune is a rune of spiritual protection, shamanism, energy healing. It also deals with um, basically like sexuality. And, and the thing is about sexual energy. That's the energy that gives you the ability to fight back. So in like social movements and religions where they repress sexuality, when you repress sexuality, you take away somebody's ability to fight back against abuse and against tyranny. But this, this rune, if I had to sum it up with one concept, it, um, it basically says, it, it deals with, spiritual protection spiritual protection of your health and well-being it's upside down it's inverted so it means no protection now interestingly you take this rune you put it upside down you put a circle around it you have the peace symbol from the 1960s in my opinion the peace symbol was created by the nazis who helped create cia after world war ii because Within the secret societies that helped get the Nazi party up and running, there were people who were into Germanic paganism and runes, and they corrupted a lot of the meanings of the runes. So I think what they did was they gave the hippies this peace sign, just like they gave them LSD. Because when LSD became popular, when Sandoz was making it, CIA bought the entire supply for... I think it was like 20 years they kept buying it. So when Timothy Leary was promoting it, 
only CIA could get a hold of it. So, and CIA has a relationship with Harvard, where he was a professor. So they gave the hippies this symbol. So when you put the rune upside down, you block the energy, you put a circle around it, you bind it and contain it. So this means that if you display this symbol, you have no spiritual protection. And the same thing happens to you when you do too many drugs, when you smoke too much weed, you do too many mushrooms. What you do is all of the energy in your aura rushes to your head and it hurts your liver. Your liver creates the energetic boundaries around your body. So not only do you have not enough energetic protection, but then you don't have personal boundaries. So you're up in other people's shit. People are up in your shit. Um, doesn't do a body or a mind very good to be on that shit all the time. So the hippies were fucking themselves and sabotaging themselves. And they had no idea. But, you know, if you can't think straight, you get taken advantage of. So anyway, this, this middle position, this middle earth, it's basically a person's experience of the issue. So he is experiencing that he has no protection. Plus, he is basically he's getting handled by people who are using and abusing him. Okay, so then the north. This is Niflheim. This is the mist world, the frost world. This is about infinite potential energy coming out of the void. In this world stands for what is coming. So what is coming? You have the Berchtanaj, you have the rebirth rune of the goddess Berchta, the goddess of the spring. This is a rune of rebirth, but it's inverted for him. So when it's inverted, it means you don't have rebirth coming. And we have to regenerate every day. Your body has to regenerate itself every day. So this could be a foreboding of him not doing too well. Um, this is also, again, it's it's a world of this northern direction. It's the world of potential energy. Um, so yeah, so so far no protection, no rebirth coming. Then you move on to the northeast. Northeast is Asgard, the home of the celestial gods and goddesses. It's a world of timeless purity. It's also the super consciousness within our own within our own psyches. Super consciousness is what connects you to everything and everyone. So this rune is called Ansuj. It means the mouth. It's like the mouth of the gods or the mouth of Odin, Odin speaking. This world stands for your hopes and your, and your aspirations. So to me, this means like he wants to speak to the people. He wants to speak, you know, sort of like some higher truth or higher wisdom. Um, yeah, he may want to do that, but, um, and he may, like I said, he may have been doing that. He may have been sort of foretelling his own illness or his own demise. So he could be dead on doing that. Then you move on to the east. The east is the, uh, Jotunheim, the giant home. The giants are, um, being their forces of nature. They deal with expansion and, um, and they, um, lose my train of thought, they deal with expansion. In this world, Jotunheim deals with the way you see yourself, because it does deal with identity. So the rune here is called Wunyo. It looks like a very angular P. So this basically means joy, and it basically means the joy of um, sort of, camaraderie and communion with other people, the joy of friendship. So he sees himself as being surrounded by friends. Um, something deluded about that, because he's actually getting used and abused, but I think he's been used and abused somehow his whole life, so he doesn't really know what healthy behavior and healthy relationships are. Um, so yeah, but that's how he sees it. Southeast, you move on to Svart Elf Heim, so Dark Elf Home or Dwarf Home. So the dwarves, this is the subconscious, so your subconscious emotions. So basically like your emotional bodies because your emotions are living things that are independent from you, the soul. So this is a realm of manifestation and magic. So the rune here is called Kenaj and this one is actually inverted, it's blocked, it's backwards. 
Kenaj is the um, the rune for Loki. It's the torch rune. It means torch, fire. Uh, Loki, Lucifer, Prometheus, they're gods of fire, which is spiritual or intellectual brilliance, brilliance and illumination. So, and Kenaj, it's where the word can comes from. So when you say I can do something, it means I have the permission from natural law. I have the ability and I have the means to do it. So having this reversed here, it means like in his subconscious, he doesn't have the ability to like look deeper into himself. So this torch rune, what it's all about, it's about that flash of spiritual intellectual brilliance that allows you to look into your own conscious and understand basically like what's making you tick. Why are you doing things? So he doesn't understand like what's going on in his own inner world. And that's how people get taken advantage of, how they get mind controlled. Um, they've had a trauma. They don't understand their own inner world. And, and they allow people... They're not, nobody who undergoes mind control and the torture and all that shit, they're not unwitting victims. They allow it to happen to themselves, even if it's just on a subconscious or unconscious level. Okay, we go to the south, the Muspelheim, the fire home, the realm of action. Action and death. Um, so this rune, it looks like a W because it's upside down. This rune, when it's upright, it looks like an M, and it's called Ehwaj. It's the horse rune. So this one is also reversed. It's blocked. Ehwaj, the horse rune, it deals with being guided by the gods. So either the gods sit on us like horses, and they guide us, or it's basically like we sit on the spirit horse provided by the gods, and the horse helps guide us. This is in a lot of legends and fairy tales where there's a knight or somebody on a quest who loses the way. He or she doesn't know where to go. So they just let go of the reins and the horse takes them where they need to go. It's in a lot of the grail stories, the story of the, uh, you know, the quest of the Holy Grail. So when you have this rune reversed, it basically means... You are not following divine intuitive guidance. Having it in the south, in Muspelheim, in the fire home, the realm of action, it means that you are not acting in accordance with intuition and divine guidance. So, you know, and when you look at it in terms of death too, it could mean like, you haven't lived in such a way where you're going to catch that spirit horse and you're going to go to, you know, off to spiritual immortality, to Valhalla, to Tirnanog, um, you know, to one of these heavenly realms. You're going to have to go to the underworld and slog through all of your, your baggage and uh, you're going to have to start all over and deal with the same issues in your next incarnation. So, it's like in the, in the movie Papillon with Steve McQueen where, you know, he has a dream and they say, like, you've, you've wasted your life. Um, could mean something like that. Or it could just, you know, these runes are also a moment in time. It's how you're doing something in a moment in time. But somebody who has been a promoter of war like him and has basically been an international crime boss like him, he hasn't been living being guided by intuition and higher consciousness. So that's that. You go on to the Southwest, you go into Helheim. Helheim is hell home. Hell is not a place of torture or torment or evil. It is the underworld. So in one sense, it's the unconscious mind. And um, in another sense, it is, um, it's also the, it's not just your own personal unconscious, but it's the collective unconscious. So it's all of the thoughts, emotions that you're not aware of. It's also all of the memories from this life and all of your past lives. So, 
The rune he has there is called Yera. Yera is where the, we get the words year and we get the words gear. So you see these two little kind of, they look like V's or they look like little Pac-Man, little Pac-Man that are kind of chomping each other. They fit together like gears. So it was observed in ancient times that the years and the seasons sort of fit and roll together like gears. So this can be, this is a rune of um, sort of the, the rhythms and the seasons of nature and of life, of life and death. Um, also, it deals with, it can deal with um, people working together and cooperating. Like the tension that comes about through intimacy. So basically, this could mean that in his unconscious mind, he is aware of the seasons of life and that a change of season is coming, like winter is coming. And that's actually going to be a title for a video I make soon, winter is coming. Um, so yeah. So then, you go to the west. This is Vanaheim, the Wayne's home. So the Wayne's are the gods and goddesses, the terrestrials. So very different from the celestial gods and goddesses who live in the northeast and Asgard. But in the west, Vanaheim, these Wayne's, these Vanir, the gods and goddesses of the natural world, of nature, of fertility, you know, of agriculture, um, they live within time and space. The Celestials in the Northeast and Asgard, they live in timeless perfection and purity. But these gods in the West, these gods and goddesses in the West, these Vanya and Vanaheim, they live within time and space. So they're, they're kind of like grandparents and they understand the human condition. This is a realm of friendships, relationships, pleasure, sensuality, uh, also magic. And then it deals with your relationship to the question or the problem at hand. Now, as a reminder, the question or the problem at hand that I pulled these runes for was I asked, show me the outcome and the energy of <clears throat> Mr. Joseph Biden getting his acquiring his fourth rooster and his fifth overall needlecraft on a, the morning of the eclipse, 25th of October, 2022. So his relationship to that scenario, it is Tiwaj. Tiwaj is the, room, the rune of Tyr or Tiu. So Tiu or Tyr, it's the god of war in the Germanic pantheon. Where we get the word Tuesday, Tiu, the god Tiu, named for Tuesday, and he's a Mars god. In all the Romance languages, Tuesday is called Mars Day. And actually, in Germanic, it's called Mars Day, but instead of having the Mar, like Maldi, like Mardi Gras, Maldi, um, we have Tiu. So Tiu is Germanic for the, the Mars god, the war god. Um, Tyr is very much a god of peace, because to keep the peace, he actually sacrifices his sword hand. So this rune is about justice, because Tyr is the upholder of the law. Um, it's about justice, it's about victory. And this symbol looks like an upward-facing arrow. So on the one hand, it's your spinal column, where your energy centers are located. It is your... Um, the, the world axis, this axis that connects our world to the underworld and to the heavens. Um, it's the spear of Tyr, you know, that he uses to enforce justice when need be. So it's interesting because Mr. Biden appears to feel like he's winning somehow. And maybe he wants release from this captivity, from this elder abuse, from getting shot up with God knows what every day to keep him alert. You know, he's had probably some sort of a tormented life and, you know, leaving it could be a victory for him. So he may feel that way. Um, he could, well, I mean, I know he's, I know he's a full-blown narcissist, but just narcissists, 
they delude themselves into thinking that they're always winning. So that's what this could indicate. I think it's more though that he's almost like begging for his own release. So that's my opinion. And then you move to the Northwest. This is Alfheim. So Alfheim means elf home. So usually we think of elves as like little Keebler elves that are like, you know, 12 inches tall. Really what the elves are, the elves are the immortals. They're the ascended masters, the perfected immortals, the shining ones. This is why in Europe there is a mountain range called the Alps. It's a very similar word. So Alps, these mountains are basically called the shining ones because they're covered in snow and they shine when the sun shines upon them. They reflect the brightness of the sun. So these elves, these shining ones, these immortals, they're the humans who graduate from earth school and they basically, they go on to be teaching assistants for this earth school. So they no longer reincarnate. They can reincarnate if they choose to, but they don't have to because they've finished the course syllabus. They're on to a whole other syllabus in a higher world. So, and they are basically the higher self. So the Southeast, the subconscious, that's the lower self. And the lower self is your instincts, your drives, your desire, you know, your, your kind of like physical desires. That's the Southeast, the Northwest, this elf home, this elf home. That's your higher self. So your higher self is basically, I don't want to get too convoluted, but it's basically a tutor spirit that attaches to your, basically your pineal gland. Um, and it advises you, you are the soul, so it advises you through your life. So his higher self is speaking through Issa. So Issa is the ice rune. It's a straight line. It looks like an icicle. So Issa deals with basically your psychic boundaries, so your emotional boundaries. It deals with isolation. You know, sometimes in life you have to step back into isolation to get a sense of yourself so that you can firmly establish your personal identity. So this rune deals a lot with that. It deals with you have the psychic, the emotional, mental boundaries to be your own self and not get all mixed up and mingled with other people to the point where you can't even tell each other apart. Um, that's a lack of boundaries and codependency when you get mixed up with people and you can't tell each other apart. You don't know where you end and the other person begins. So this, the elves are basically telling him like, it might be like a last warning, like sit down before you fall down. Um, just stop doing this. But, you know, one way you can look at it, you know, the elder abuse angle, which I take about his, his reign on the Iron Throne, it's like, yeah, it's elder abuse, but he's consenting to it. He's not a cut and dry victim. You know, nobody in this world is. If you see things that way, you never heal from trauma. You're always looking for someone to blame for what's going on with you. So that's the way I like to look at it. So yeah, interesting rune reading. Doesn't look good for him. I um, guess there's always that possibility he could make it, but and I think he's going to be incapacitated at the very least. And also this, you know, you'll notice that the north to south direction, including the middle, that whole axis running from north to south is blocked. So that basically means like you're not acting according to your potential. You're not using your potential and you're not using the resources available to you. And then, you know, the other reversed rune is, again, it's the Southeast. So it's the subconscious, it's the lower self. So he's not, he doesn't have a handle on his lower self. And that's something by 80 years old, you know, that's something you should have kind of mastered and, you know, gotten a handle on. So that's pretty much that. Um, stay tuned for the clown show. So yeah, I don't think he, he doesn't get past his birthday. October 20th, in my opinion, um, as the president, maybe not in this 3D world. I don't wish any illness or death upon him, but, you know, this stuff certainly happens. 
So, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, thanks for tuning in. And if any of these types of readings spark your interest, you know how to find me. I'd be happy to give you a reading. I do these things, these astrology readings, these rune readings, in very different, rare, mostly unknown ways that I don't see many other people doing them. Um, so, yeah, check it out. And I'll talk to you later. I'll keep you posted. Have a good one.